I'm so glad this year the Circular Forum has a lot more younger generation of uh, creators or potential convert of this ideology. Um, but first of all, I want to say I'm from uh, Asia, uh, but educated in the West. I'm educated in Rome too before. Um, and how the circular economy come about is when I was studying archeology span when I was in Roma, okay? Um, I was there for a year. Um, I studied archeology span and uh, then you, when you open the wall uh, in Rome, every single wall in Rome is built with trash. Uh, in front is Opus Reticulatum, in the back, amphora, human body, bones, dead animals, you know, leftover fish, everything. It's all the trash is using as a new generation of building material, one on top of another. So that's when we got the idea from the very beginning, okay? Um, I, I was expecting some sort of technical difficulty in Italy, so I, I think I will forego the presentation. Uh, uh, maybe just go to the next page. Uh, uh, do, do I have a control to go to the next page? Yeah, um, technical difficulty. No, no, no worries, it's, it's okay. Uh, but it's okay. okay. Okay, so. This is the building, we, oh, we, so we basically take trash, uh, modern trash, which is a bunch of crap, let's say this, right? Um, I'll take this material, can we make that into a super high grade architecture projects using the least amount of footprint? There's only f eight columns here, okay? Everything is manufactured in the highest grade architecture standard fabric, uh, 2000 denier, okay? Um, can you go to the next slide, see if the video play, if it doesn't play, I just, uh, next slide. Okay, I just want to play it. Um, it just not. Okay, so it's playing. Okay, perfect. So basically, this whole building is constructed in one day. Okay, and you can see uh, after you prefabricate it, everything is uh, controlled by a air pneumatic valve, uh, solar power linked to the sensor. Um, so you know how strong the mechanical system has to be. And it's recently just opened by the king of Thailand um, in Bangkok. This is next to the Bangkok airport. Okay, so we trying to show how light footprint toxicity you can uh, use, how little footprint you can build a building, okay, using trash. Okay, this is just one example, okay. And I think this is kind of the scale of a type of project that we do. Um, uh, that's why we think architecture <clears throat> is a very good place for you to take all the trash, okay? So if the building doesn't look this sexy, I don't think anyone will pay for it. By the way, the cost of this building is the same price, half of a price of the cheapest Walmart in United States, like those big box retail, okay? So can you produce a building so innovative, okay? using trash, using half of a price of a lowest price building you have right now, uh, anywhere, okay? And this is what we're trying to prove. We're trying to make a point, okay? So all our projects are something like that, okay? And, but um, unfortunately, what I'm wearing today and what the um, representative from Adidas uh, is talking about, by the way, we work with the, you guys. We also work with Nike. Uh, for a long time, I could not work with Adidas, uh, but, by the way, their yarn come from our plant, <laughs> okay. Uh, from, uh, we work with Parlay too, okay, uh, from the very beginning. Uh, by the way, there's a problem. There's only one plant that produced that quality yarn. One plant uh, in Taiwan, not in Italy, in Taiwan. That's a problem. You see, you cannot actually transform the waste uh, into something that's actually usable. What I'm wearing now is a prototype uh, for our own stuff, okay? That's 100% made from recycled polyester, okay, from this, okay? But this is only produced in Taiwan, in Japan, okay? And however, but we do, we generate the waste here today, for example. The polystyrene cup that we're using, every time there's an event, sports event, fashion event, just imagine how much cappuccino espresso cup you throw away. 
By the way, polystyrene has zero value in the system. Zero. So that's me, not recycle at all. All this LDPE bags, not recycle. How much do you use every day? This is just what I have on my desk right now, right? Okay. Um, so if you use these material to create a building, this is the carbon footprint you save. Okay, this is based on European system, ISO 14001, uh, Gavi analysis. How much water you save, how much toxicity footprint to the uh, polluting the air, how much you're polluting the sea. And a lot of people doesn't believe us, so we brought the machine to you guys. So I, we created a series of portable plants. Okay, um, I mean, I won't show more image. I think you can research, and anytime you see portable recycling plant, decentralized manufacturing plant, decentralized recycling plant, solar power, um, air, uh, uh, air, water, everything's recycled within the inside, it's all like that. So we brought that to Milan last year. Uh, with the city government, with Cinque Villa's help, uh, we created uh, in Castello, uh, we recycle uh, close to a ton of this uh, thing, uh, polystyrene, and we turn that into these tiles, okay? Um, and they are used for our own construction projects. Um, um, this is one, uh, this is, this project is literally uh, three years old, okay? And uh, of course, there's a lot of software, there's a lot of hardware involved in trying to create that because every material has a different pressure, uh, different uh, air requirements, and different heat requirement. okay? So can the machine be smart enough to be able to adjust to all this different kind of waste with just one machine? Okay, so this is one thing. And then what we did uh, after the Salone is we brought the machine to Tibet, okay? We tried to recycle with Jackie Chen uh, at the highest 4,500 meter at the foot of Himalayas, at all the glaciers. We're talking about water problem. All the water are being contaminated by this at 4,500 meters too, okay? And what's worse is that it has kinder eggs at 4,500 meters because the Tibetans also want kinder eggs because it's just so desirable, right? Right, the chocolate, what's wrong with uh, kids having chocolate? Can you stop them from uh, having Kinder Eggs? It's inhumane, right? Okay, okay. So you see, the waste is there, but imagine 4,500 uh, meter, okay? Low oxygen level, you cannot even bring the trash anywhere. So what can they do? Open burn, okay? Open burn the trash. What happened when you open burn the trash? All that particles goes into the sky, goes into our water source. Because China's water source is all powered by the Tibetan Plateau. Okay, and that power, the three river of Asia, okay, including Southeast Asia, Mekong River, from Vietnam all the way to Thailand, and from Yellow and Yangtze River. These are the huge, uh, biggest freshwater dependency uh, where that is. So this is what we did. We brought the machine there, and then we used the trash um, collected locally and to clean up the glacier beds. And then we turn that into building tiles th like this for the schools. So then we build schools with this trash. Okay, so this is, so this year, um, imagine like after three years, we can produce this kind of ugly tiles, okay? And we can starting to get to quite, I mean, first of all, th that machine produced these ugly tiles from, look, this is plastic bags. This is POA, which is the self-proclaimed degradable material, which is probably the worst on earth that should happen, okay? Um, I'll explain that later, but, uh, and then paper cups, uh, Starbucks paper cups. By the way, that is plastic, that's not paper, okay? PET bottles, right? Okay, and all kinds of yogurt, um, like kin Kinder Eggs toys, those are polypropylene. And this is the most dreaded uh, these days, all the coffee lid and all the straws, right? Everyone talk about straws these days, okay? Um, so this is the quality we get. And the machine is 40 foot container, it's quite big, 
Okay, now this year, um, actually in two weeks, uh, three weeks, three weeks, you will see a new set of machinery that we are bringing to Milan to show in the design week. Uh, it's even smaller, two fridge, just two fridge. Okay, and you can produce material like this. If you see the different in quality, this is where the sexiness of a product from a technology can be, okay? If you separate the prop material properly, it becomes super sexy, okay? And we work with local designers to come out with, this is the, I just broke it uh, on the plane, but uh, this is a polystyrene, uh, which is the this into that. A beautiful bowl uh, inspired by the Fibonacci series, okay? And then this is the PET, uh, which is the polyester, and this is the PP, okay? And this is all produced within four minutes, okay? And it can produce four bowls per four minutes. You see that the gap in technology, the efficiencies, and this take away 80 82, 82 bottle caps, okay? Every bowl for polypropylene. And yogurt cartons, probably around 20 something, yogurt cartons. So we're gonna have a campaign uh, this year in Salone. Um, for those people who, during the opening hour of that machine, bring 22 items, whatever items you can find. Bring, bring 22 water bottles, bring 22 uh, anything in any combination. And we have a smart machine of collections, okay? It has a AI, uh, it has a camera linked with the AI database to make sure you recycle properly. If, it doesn't re if you don't recycle properly, it will push a message to you as saying that please don't screw up the environment, you know? Okay, but if you recycle properly, it will award you with points, a point system, okay? A huge amount, imagine a 22 item recycling, you can exchange for something very valuable, okay? Let's say exchange for something that's five euro, but wouldn't you pick up this 22 pieces, 21 pieces, by the way, 21 links to Fibonacci, sorry. 21 pieces, don't you think 21 pieces, you pick up on your daily activity, sort it properly, recycle properly, and you can turn that material into something real. Okay, and be telling something of value. And what's interesting about decentralizing the recycling infrastructure is that the creativity, then the, the power of creativity is back into local community. Okay, Italian design for Italians, okay, Chinese design for Chinese, right? You know, like, or produce for your, I mean, everyone's in the export business these days, but I mean, how I got started, I started in the, uh, I started in the giant corporations, $100 billion corporations, you know? Um, and if you, in that type of business, okay, we do work for Adidas, we do work for Nike, we do work for anybody, even maybe, I don't know if we, if we do anything for Federale, but um, do you see what I mean? It's centralized in the control of that information, okay? So we want to decentralize that, and decentralize that, linking that, so right now we have, uh, two colleagues from Polytechnique from Milan who's interning, and they are playing with this. They're playing with our material database. Okay, we invented 1,200 new material directly from post-consumer waste based on the modern generation of uh, simulations. All the computer simulation, be to, in order for you to do a cup, do a bowl, do a structure, do a column, do a insulation tile, you need to have a digital simulation tool. What the mechanical strength, what is all the MI, what is all the material can do. We open source this information. You can go on materialdb at miniwiz.com and you can actually get that information. You can create your own information too. And this is very important for us to start getting serious about playing with the material rather than talking about what to do. So that's, that's all I have to say, bye. <laughs>